Breastfeeding is one of the most effective ways to ensure child health and survival. However, contrary to World Health Organization recommendations, fewer than half of infants under six months old are exclusively breastfed. It is the ideal, safe and clean food for infants containing antibodies that protect against childhood illnesses. On the nutrition spot this Thursday, we discuss breastfeeding with our nutritionists Kwasima Regina and Eddie Ziwa, hosted by Gif Nakainga. dear viewers of the nutrition sport thank you so much for making it a point to be able to tune in better and tv i believe there are those that are uh, craving to be watching the show live on youtube and on our facebook kindly go on youtube and put in better and tv uganda then you'll be able to see this particular show the nutrition sport streaming uh, the same thing on facebook the nutrition uh, sorry better and tv and then you'll be able to watch the nutrition sport if in any case you have any Admissions on our show tonight kindly still put it in our comment section on YouTube and on Facebook We shall be able to go there and read them out loud and if you are out there and you would want to call and Be a part of the discussion, please make it a point to call But I'll let you know when you're going to call the number will be over the screen I'll also be able to read for you the number, but thank you so much. I uh, just feel feel comfortable i believe that beta and tv is the best place for each one of you to be tonight in the studios i'm so much privileged to have our specialist the nutritionist and guess what today we're going to talk about breastfeeding it concerns each one of us if you're a father a mother a girl a boy are you planning to get married are you planning to have children are you planning anything to do with children it really concerns each one of us and i would want us to pay attention and also maybe <laughs> get a notebook and note down something because we're going to be learning. Allow me at this time to welcome our specialist in the house, Regina, our nutritionist. You so much welcome. Thank you, our host. And Eddie, you so much welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Back to ladies first, you know, anyway. Yeah, ladies first. <laughs> Regina, something to our viewers and welcome them on the show. Um, our viewers outside there. Thank you so much for watching Bethany TV. You're welcome. Uh, today we are going to talk about breastfeeding. So mothers outside there and those planning to be mothers like me in the future. <laughs> I was about to ask whether you're breastfeeding. <laughs> no, I'm planning to be a mother in the future. So it's very good to breastfeed our babies because we are going to talk about the benefits of breastfeeding and yeah, I guess you learn something. I know that future mothers we shall exclusively breastfeed our babies. <laughs> thank you so much, Eddie. To the yeah. fathers. Eh? Okay, anyway, first uh, welcome, my viewers. Thank you, our dear viewers, all that are watching us from the different channels, from YouTube, Facebook, and those that are watching live. Uh, I'm very glad that uh, it's really very good when people get concerned about issues like breastfeeding and now that next uh, month, the first week of August, is there is the breastfeeding yes. week. And it's really good when uh, we have come up with such programs and people get more aware of what is good for their health. Yeah. Do you think we should have men concentrate on this? Yeah, surely. I do believe men should also concentrate on this. Even the children. Well, the Why? Why should men concentrate on this? Uh, because men are supposed to give support to the ladies <laughs> as, as they do the breastfeeding. And even the children, when they're in their schools, the mm. teenagers, while they're still in high school, they should know that breastfeeding is a very good thing, such that by the time they get their babies, they're really sure that it's the best thing to do for their babies. Thank you so much. I know that WHO and then UNICEF has uh, different recommendations, and they really recommend that every child should be fed well, especially immediately after they're given birth to, and also ex exclusively breastfed for the next six months. So we would want to understand a number of things about breastfeeding. And one of the things tonight we would want to really understand is why is breastfeeding a natural aspect of motherhood? Eddie, why do we have it as a natural aspect of motherhood? So breastfeeding, first of all, it's the most natural way a mother can nourish their baby. It's, uh, it's easily accessible and just like any other animal, just like all mammals produce breast milk for their for their uh, young ones, mm -hmm. the mother 
produces this milk in a way that is its, its composition and all its ingredients are formulated to specifically fit the nutrition of the baby. It's the most natural food a mother can ever give to their baby. And um, regarding its composition and all the nutrients in it and the way it is served, um, I believe there has not been any replacement or alternative that will ever reach the standard of breast milk. Very yeah, good. so it remains the gold standard. I feel like asking yeah. the same question to Regina, Me? that she's an aspiring mother. Yeah, um, I call breastfeeding the best gift any mother could give to their child. Reasons being, now imagine your baby is not breastfed, the benefits they are missing out. Not like me, me I'm exclusively breastfed. I thank my mother outside there for exclusively breastfeeding me because it has many benefits as we are going to see in front of that. For example, to the, to the baby, it has many nutrients like the proteins, carbohydrates, energy, vitamins, minerals, all these nutrients are essential for the, for the good growth and development of these babies. Other than having only nutrients, it has components, other components like a lysozyme, which, has, which prevents iron-dependent bacteria in, our, in the baby's GIT. So this iron-dependent bacteria, it prevents the baby from completely metabolizing that iron. Mm -hmm. So when that baby doesn't have that enough iron, they're going to have poor neurological development. Yeah, those are some of the benefits to the Baby. To the baby. Thank you yeah. so much. I believe there are benefits to the mother, to the father, <laughs> yeah, and to the um, society. There are benefits to the mother, to the baby, even to the father and to the country at large. Okay. And these benefits begin right away from the moment the baby is produced. We encourage that uh, breastfeeding is initiated within the first hour of birth. And that is what is being preached in all hospitals, in all referral hospitals around, even private hospitals. And this is because this breast milk, usually the very first milk that the baby, the mother produces, the colostrum, it's very little, it's yellow in color, but it's the best because it has, uh, it has the, the antibodies, its composition is quite, there is nothing we can ever compare to its composition because it provides the best immunity the baby can ever get at that very moment when they're just born. And even just looking at um, that moment when the baby is born, a lot of bacteria enters into the baby's body through mm -hmm. the ears, through the eyes. And it's this colostrum that has the antibodies that are going to protect the baby from all those infections. Yes, so, so right you mean the, uh, breastfeeding helps to boost the baby's immunity? Yeah. So right besides the, the, uh, the nutrition, body. there is yeah. boosting the immunity. True. What other components or what else does breastfeeding bring about? Yeah, so right from the time the baby starts breastfeeding, that very time when we attach the baby to the, to the mother's belly, that skin-to-skin -skin contact, that attachment is very vital. Even, long, even after a long period of time, we've seen that this attachment helps the baby to create, uh, to become more assured of themselves. Yeah. We've seen that these babies who are breastfed, even during the very first hour, they are more confident later in life. They have this sense of assurance within them. And um, even apart from just that, that... In addition to his yeah. point, this breast milk also contains these long uh, polyunsaturated fatty acids. Mm -hmm. These fatty acids help in brain development of this baby. That's why you find breastfed children, like children breastfed up to like two years. Most of them in class, they be intelligent, right. very. So I would advise mothers, <laughs> if at least to try to breastfeed up to two years. Okay. Exclusively is a must for the first six months, but then up to two years, because it's going to, to have many benefits to you, the mother, and then the baby. For the mother, you're going to, breastfeeding helps you mm -hmm. lose weight. How? Well, a breastfeeding mother, you lose around 400, 500 calories per day. Where do they go? They, you, you use them to make mm. this breast milk. I think mothers didn't know about that because yes. most of them have So been most of you mothers, you be there outside, oh, I have this weight gain, I'm not losing it. But you're also not breastfeeding. This <laughs> breastfeeding also helps you lose that weight. Okay. It can also help you, it's also a natural form of family planning. How? If you're breastfeeding, you're not going to have ovulation. 
if you're not ovulating, you won't get pregnant. Won't get pregnant. That is also a natural form of family planning. Instead of taking these contraceptives that um, increase the chemicals in our body and then expose us to cancer. Okay. Then another benefit of breastfeeding to the mother, it reduces that uterine bleeding, the after birth. How? Because after, after giving birth, when you start breastfeeding, this, the, bre the breastfeeding process um, causes uterine contractions. These uterine con contractions that occur frequently cause the, the uterine bleeding to stop. And also that, hom that hormone released during breastfeeding, the oxytocin hormone, also helps in preventing uterine contraction. And also prevent this breastfeeding improves the child and mother bonding. When we are breastfeeding, there are two hormones released. We have prolactin and oxytocin. This oxytocin, usually called, it's usually called a love hormone okay. or a cardio chemical. So that oxytocin helps the mother relax and think more of their baby, concentrate more to their baby. That creates the bond, the mother-child bond. Yeah, thank I, you. I, I feel like every mother is going to run to now breastfeed. Yeah, the the other aspect of losing weight. <laughs> yeah, true. And, and just what Regina said about, uh, about uh, breastfeeding being exclusive, I think our viewers should know what exclusive breastfeeding means. Sure. Uh, because when we say exclusive breastfeeding, we mean that you should provide only and only breast milk during the first six months when the baby is born. You do not even include water. During the first? The first six, six months, months after, after the baby yeah, is born. After the baby is born. You don't provide any, any other food. Any food, food no. any water, apart sure. from medications and supplements are prescribed by the medical personnel. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Because we've had some parents who are like, uh, I think my child is thirsty, I should maybe give them water. Mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. I think the milk is maybe so concentrated, let me give them a little bit of water. Uh, but this milk, this breast milk, its composition, because it's a natural substance and it's adaptable, it keeps changing according to the baby's needs. Oh, wow. So you'll find that the composition on the first day you give birth is different from the second day. Even the composition that of the breast milk in the, in the morning is different from that in the evening. And that <laughs> is not with formula milk. Okay. So the breast, this breast milk itself has enough water for the baby. There is no need for you to get some water, maybe you think the baby is thirsty or something mm -hmm. like that, yeah. So exclusive breastfeeding means that you only give breast milk for the first six months. I think maybe yeah. to just ask you something on that, we've had many um, mm -hmm. mothers immediately after giving birth, they maybe get other complications because of the pregnancy and they are unable to breastfeed their children or their infants. So in that case, what is, um, what is supposed to be given to that baby? whereby the mother is unable to breastfeed yeah so there are a few rare conditions when indeed the mother is unable to breastfeed for example when they have uh, maybe like mastitis or they're having cracked nipples and they are bleeding or during certain conditions like recently we had the COVID-19 whereby uh, there was some you know, COVID-19 was quite new and there were speculations that maybe the mother should not breastfeed the yeah. child. Even the recent Ebola epidemic when, uh, you know, Ebola was very infectious and deadly. So they had to separate the mothers from their babies. So there are just a few conditions when you think, when actually the mother cannot breastfeed. Okay. But for most of the time, the very natural way, even for HIV positive mothers, the best way for them is to do exclusive breastfeeding for the first six months and even continue with other supplement with other complementary feeds for the for the first year of life so this um, is very tell us about uh, the hiv that if a mother is hiv positive and then they breastfeed the child cannot get the hiv through Maybe breastfeeding to help him on that or hiv transmission when a mother is hiv positive and they are they have to exclude i would advise them to exclusively breast breastfeed even when they are negative sorry yes. positive but following these two maybe points um the the hiv positive mothers they should strictly follow their arv recommendations okay by the medical personnel because these arvs that hiv medication reduces the perinatal transmission 
during breastfeeding and also work well consistently mm. with that health person. You have to keep on advising them while they are, they are doing checkups, they keep on advising them now you can stop or you can continue to be on a safe side for the, both the baby and the mother. Thank you. Yeah, so to answer your question which you asked, uh, what's the alternative in case this mother cannot, cannot. breastfeed the baby? Um, the very first thing they should do is if they're able to express the milk, that would be good. Wow. That would be like an Even alternative. when they have the cracked nipples? So it depends, the, it depends, it depends on the what condition, condition they're having. Okay. If the condition allows them to express, then they can express. And yeah, because um, when they express, we are still having the same composition that is that oh. was in the breast milk. The only mm. difference is that we are we have the temperature is changing. And now you have to do maybe some refrigeration, and during that process, you're going to lose some antibodies. Some of the the components in this milk will get spoiled when, like, you maybe have to warm the milk yeah. or refrigerate it. Yeah. So, or is the best ways to have the baby take it directly from the nipple. But if, it's th if that is not possible, then that's mm. when we come in and express the milk. Thank you so much and thank you so much our viewers you are watching the nutrition spot and this is Bethan TV for you. We are trying to shed light on breastfeeding. Why is it crucial? Why is it important? And why would we um, love to have every mother accept and embrace breastfeeding their children exclusively for the first six months maybe you can even go on two years even three years even four years but exclusively just like it is stated by the who and then the unicef um if you are watching us on youtube it is better tv uganda and on facebook better tv uganda you can also follow us on instagram you can follow us on twitter and you can also make it a point to watch the different programs that we have as better tv we have amazing and amazing programs and basically we emphasize health because it's very important for you to be healthy for health is well so well we are diving into what <clears throat> society and culture does to impact this whole idea of breastfeeding so to you zoa and then regina we believe their culture beliefs and then are their standards that are being set by the society if it comes to breastfeeding so tell us about the culture and then the societal aspects if it comes to breastfeeding yeah so traditionally um i must say that traditionally we used to have a very good uh, breastfeeding culture oh where uh, mothers used to stay at home and do the breastfeeding there wasn't this uh sort of modernity where mothers have to go to work you find that nowadays the maternity leave for some workplaces is less than two months or even uh, sometimes just one month yeah yeah so there are changes that are going on in the world and in our communities and these are affecting the breastfeeding culture. Um, but uh, I, I want to thank the, for the new policies that are coming in. The new policies that are coming in, we are finding that certain places now, places of work, people are having breastfeeding rooms, they are creating a safe environment for people to breastfeed. And um, yeah, so I believe that uh, if we continue on with this, even uh, we've seen some, we've seen some policies that are aiming at increasing the, the maternity leave to at least six months so that at least for these six months you're only having exclusive breastfeeding and maybe after when the baby is done with that phase they can later on go to work and maybe express the milk for the baby yeah so i believe that uh, maybe as things go on uh, much as the, the modern world is bringing in different habits we can still stick to the gold standard and make sure that our babies are healthy because what what um, comes from this is that we always have significant outcomes even later in life even after 10 years <laughs> the, after the baby has breastfed we find that yeah. these benefits carry on and carry True. on yeah. Thank you so much. Well, to those that have just joined us, we're looking at um, the different, uh, Im the importance. We're looking at um, how best can our children be breastfed and how can we help the mothers that are into this all thing of breastfeeding because I believe they really need the support that is physical and also that is emotional. People that are watching us on YouTube, you are doing an amazing job, but as you post, make it a point to let us know 
where you are watching Bethan TV from. And if any case you have any questions, take, uh, maybe you can also post them there. We shall be able to review your, po your uh, questions, those that would want to call. The number is going to be provided after we get off from the break. But we want to believe that breastfeeding has been a timeless practice and dating back to the dawn of humanity. And we believe that it's not only fundamental um, as a biological function, but also it's a beautiful journey that empowers mothers and nourishes the infants in a way that no any other kind of food or any other kinds of uh, feeding can really nourish them. So back to our nutritionist uh, specialist that we have in the studio would want to really understand how best can breastfeeding be done because I believe for the first time mothers have issues trying to understand how am I supposed to hold the baby, how am I supposed to clean the breast, how am I supposed to do this and that. So Regina, to the first time mothers that feel like it's a whole lot of work for them to breastfeed how can you help them first of all i would like to clarify the different myth about breastfeeding because most mothers out there do not want to breastfeed because of those myths yeah. the first one most mothers believe that when they breastfeed their breasts are going to sag yeah isn't it true <laughs> no it's not true reason very being, realistic this, it's not true it's not true okay. because this sagging of the breasts is brought about by hormonal changes and the aging process, not oh. breastfeeding. Not there breast, are so like many people all. breastfeed and their breasts are in. Mm -mm. Let me ask Eddie. Eddie. Yes. You no, know, that's a very. Eh? <laughs> yeah, it's a it's, it's a very critical mm. issue that ladies are always worried about. We are. But uh, ideally, their breasts will not will not uh, necessarily sag because of breastfeeding. Okay. Because even in women who don't, even women who don't breastfeed, yes. the aging process will eventually make the yes. breasts. So it's always the so age, you know, yeah, it's the breast it's the aging process. Aging and yeah. hormonal changes. <laughs> okay. Then the second myth. Others, other mothers believe that, ah, me, I'll give my child infant formula to replace this breast milk. No, mm -hmm. they are not the same. This breast milk has those antibodies that improve the immune function of the <laughs> baby and make the baby grow healthy. But this infant formula may not have those antibodies or they may not be in the same amounts as the ones in the breast milk. That's the second myth. So that breast milk does not equal to that infant formula that most mothers opt to these mm -hmm. days. Yes. Yes. So I would advise the mothers to still breastfeed and not use infant formula. Thank you. Thank you so much. I, I think before I get any further, we should really acknowledge that breastfeeding is notorious and is a path. Those myths and misconceptions get us in a corner and we'll be like, no, I can't do this for the next one year. But yet, we are supposed to do it. Let's get into a break. We shall come back immediately. Those that are watching us online, please don't go anywhere. You're watching Nutrition Sport. We'll be right back after the break. Bethany TV for health. Coming this July on Bethany TV. More goodies to look out for. Nourishing the Temple, Monday to Saturday at 6 a.m. For your spiritual inspiration. The Sunset Lounge, Monday to Friday at 5 p.m. A fun and edu infotainment show. After a busy day with lots of cash and prizes to be won. Health and Lifestyle Magazines at 8 p.m. Like a Rise Woman. All about women. And your exciting daily menu still continues. At 6.30 a.m. Healthy Morning at 9 a.m. Be Hopeful. At Midday. Bethany Sports at 1 p.m. The Playlist, 3.30 p.m. Movie at 9 p.m. Chicago Med. Here's the deal. Start your day with us and end it with us. Bethany TV for health. The Higher Life. 
The Era of the World Revolution with Apostle Dr. David Kunowa and Pastor Rita Bella Kunowa of Rivers of Life Assembly International, Boston, Massachusetts, USA. Streaming every Tuesday from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. East African Standard Time with the incorruptible, incomparable, and revolutionizing life transforming Word of God. Only on Bethany TV for Health. Road traffic crashes is one of the leading causes of death among young people aged 5 and 29 years. In 2022, Uganda registered 21,473 crashes out of which 4,534 people died and 15,227 seriously injured. And on average, we lose 12 people daily. Legacy Road Safety Initiative in partnership with KCCA, Ministry of Works and Transport, Ministry of Health and Bethany TV have organized the second road safety marathon for the crash victims to help create awareness. The marathon will take place on the 23rd of July 2023 starting at 7 a.m. from Nakasero Primary School grounds. Book your kids at 25,000 from Legacy Road Safety Initiative offices or visit www.lrs-initiative.org to register. Call 0752-605-479. Misconceptions surrounding disabilities and brain health. On Health and Wellness this Saturday, we aim to shed light on the importance of brain health for everyone, as well as the unique challenges faced by individuals living with disabilities. By exploring this crucial intersection, we hope to foster empathy, raise awareness, and promote inclusivity in our society. With your host, Dorothy Ainembabazi, and your guest, CEO, Lifeline Health, John Tumusime. Your perfect ignition for the day's inspiration prescription is on the Healthy Morning. Start your day informed about top stories, health, tech and travel news as we give you the day's weather and traffic, business analysis and sports updates. Healthy Morning, every weekday at 6.30 a.m. on Bethany TV. Bethany TV for health. Honorable Badimwezo Ronald Nsubuga is an engineer by profession, a member of parliament for Nakawa East, and chairperson KCCA Roads Committee. He has served as the ambassador of the Korean community in Uganda before and was on the honorary committee of the Global Social Economy Forum in 2018, among other responsibilities. He is married to one wife and is a father. Honorable Badimwezo lost his leg in a car accident in 2000, and when you listen to his story, you will understand why he says, Disability is not inability. Don't miss his story on Be Hopeful this Friday with Winnie Babazi at 9 a.m. on Bethany TV. Bethany TV for health. And now, more with Nutrition Sport. You are watching Bethan TV for health and this is the nutrition spot that we are discussing breast feeding why is it very crucial why is it very very important we've seen that uh, come the next month of august it's going to be the first week of august actually it's going to be the breastfeeding week why would even the world health organization gazette the entire week to just talk about breastfeeding to just teach mothers about how best they can breastfeed and i believe many mothers out there have questions over uh, how do i know that my baby is satisfied how do i get to know that this is enough time for me to breastfeed how do i even get to know 
know that uh, maybe my baby is responding to this breast milk. So with our experts, our nutritionist Regina and then our nutritionist Eddie Zewa are enlightening us on all these different aspects. I'm going to start with Zewa before I go. I, I've seen many messages on YouTube and I'm going to go through each and every um, message here. So Eddie, we've seen that um, many mothers have questions of uh, how do I get to know that now my baby is full, I should stop? Or for how long? Does it have a timeline? Am I supposed to do it 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes? How is it supposed to be like? Yeah, thank you, Gift. So breastfeeding should be quite a responsive habit. The mother should be able to identify signs and signals from the baby when the baby is hungry or when they are satisfied. Usually when they are hungry, they will have signs like uh, they will look at, they will stare at the breast, they will reach out their hand, they will have their mouth open. And when they are satisfied, you will find that they are, they are doing the reverse. So it depends and the duration varies for different times. You might find that one time the baby is only breastfeeding for only 10 minutes. At other times they breastfeed for even longer. At other mm -hmm. times they just breastfeed, you've just given them in five minutes, they're already done. So these mo mothers should also understand that sometimes babies breastfeed not because they're hungry but because it, it brings pleasure to them it's like their way of having pleasure or comfort wow. maybe mm -hmm. like if you're having a, a long journey you might find the baby just wants to be at the breast just for that comfort around there and um, uh, how mothers can monitor that indeed the babies are getting enough they should uh, look out for a steady weight gain um, because okay. we uh, and also they should look out for weight diapers um, at least six in a day uh, yeah that can at least give them an idea that their child is having enough breast milk yeah. so regina uh, you know we can understand that now my baby is having enough or now it's like this but also there are they, they are i think i would call it the effective breastfeeding there are those particular practices that uh get along with breastfeeding what could be some of those practices that mothers should put into consideration to ensure that they are effectively breastfeeding their babies uh, the first thing uh, i would advise all breastfeeding mothers first of all ensure proper hygiene before breastfeeding your baby wash your hands with okay. warm water before because because remember you're going to touch this breast so if if your hands have germs, you will affect that baby because these babies are so sensitive since their immune system is not yet fully developed. And then I would also advise, just as a way of increasing breast milk supply from your breasts, I would advise you to massage, gently massage the breasts before breastfeeding because this massaging um, brings the more, more milk for the baby. So at the time the baby will reach to circle it out of the breast, mm -hmm. they will have a consistent flow okay. instead of having it in bits. Then offering each breast twice to the baby. Offering it twice, yes. like interchangeably? Or? Yeah, can, you first, can first give the first one if you feel like the baby is now maybe complaining that, uh, that this is no longer enough, mm -hmm. you shift. Mm -hmm. As you shift, this can be regained back. You offer back this breast then you also offer, offer each breast twice, each breast feeding session. This right. also helps to completely empty this breast to prevent breast engorgement. So if they do not completely uh, empty Yeah, you're going to have breast engorgement. You can even have infections like past buildup in your breast. That is breast abscess, then mm -hmm. also mastitis as he talked about it, mm -hmm. an infection. So if the advice, if maybe your baby is full and they're showing signs that they are full oh. after breastfeeding but you still feel your breasts are heavy you can express this milk into a clean container or clean <laughs> okay. baby's cup talk about the container talk about the storage of the container talk yes. about the cleaning of the container if it comes to storage is it uh, should it have a particular temperature how is it supposed to be like yes after expressing this breast milk put it in a clean maybe a, a baby's cup mm -hmm. Very clean, cleaned with warm water is what I mean, not any water. Because as I said, these babies are sensitive. Then place it in a refrigerator. But this breast milk you have expressed shouldn't go beyond 24 hours. After 24 hours, 
it is spoiled. So in the, as you put it in the refrigerator, after putting it in the refrigerator, when a baby is hungry and it is still there, you can get it, warm it. How will you warm it? Get it, put it in a cup, put it in warm water. Place that cup in that warm water and warm it. Then you give it to the baby. Thank you so much, Regina. <coughs> I would want to to now have um, the different comments, all the submissions from our online audience. And uh, oh, some of them are just excited, like uh, uh, Simon, Eric, and uh, uh, Kirunji. Kirunji says, thanks for the great presentation. Kwesima, we appreciate. Ben Richie, uh, the thumbs up to <laughs> Lecture Regina. And uh, still he says that uh, thanks to all the presenters, we're getting there. Then Eric says, I do, I do not know about, I did not know about um, failure to ovulate while breastfeeding. Thanks, Regina, for that point. Then uh, Kim says that thank you so much for an informative show. Thanks, Gifta Nutrition, Regina and Eddie. Then Agnes says, thank you, Beta TV. We are really enjoying the show. Nutritionist Regina, we are la uh, yes, <laughs> learning from a future mother. <laughs> Okay, and Roy says, well, as a future parent, I'm taking notes. Thanks, Regina and Eddie. And uh, Kranima says, thanks for the th uh, free medical education. And then um, Ayibali says, thanks for the show. I wish all mothers could access this kind of information because it's really important. Um, Regin oh, this is Ayibali. Is she's she's yeah, she's watching from Boyo Gedele. Then Esther, uh, the show is amazing. Thank you, guys. Hannah says enjoying the show from Nakaseke District. Oh, greetings to everyone in Nakaseke District and uh, Ayebali. Greetings to the people in where you get it, the Chileka Banda and the areas that uh, surround it. Uh, then Krenima, Krenima says that uh, breast milk is indeed so good for the baby, but many workplaces are not baby friendly. Mothers find themselves choosing to breastfeed or just get off their jobs. So how can mothers balance work and breast? feeding that's a question and also hannah says that uh, how can working mothers practice exclusive breastfeeding because uh, most workplaces do not allow them with children kindly help so we're going to first answer these particular questions that is krenma and then Mwebaze. i think it's about uh, having mothers uh, be accepted with their children at their workplaces <laughs> You're putting them in a dilemma, but I'll start with you, Eddie. Just imagine you're the boss, Kati Munangi. What would you do for these kinds of mothers? Would you accept them to come with their children at work, their kids? What would you do for them? Anyway, what are some of the solutions to this? Does it mean that mothers should quit breastfeeding or quit their jobs? How can we balance that? Too? Like you said, the world is evolving. Yeah. So I highly believe this is a, a matter of national importance. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to this, I think the authorities we have in our societies, the, the government, they should really consider coming up with policies that favor a, a friendly environment for breastfeeding mothers. Because the benefits from breast milk can even really contribute to economic development even later in life because breastfed children, like we said, they're going to have less infections, they're going to be brighter in class. Meaning these are the children that are going to become lawyers, they are going to become doctors in future, they are going to become engineers, just because of those first two years that you give serious attention to. So it's a, it's a long-term goal, it's a long-term investment uh, that we should actually, our, our bosses and the government and the people in authoritative positions, maybe they should consider and make this uh, a possible thing to happen, yeah. How? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Regina, what do you think? Do you think that uh, our bosses should agree to have children uh, with their mothers at work? Or if it's not possible, which other alternative do we have, not this of mothers not working anymore? I agree that bosses should put into consideration ah. putting breastfeeding areas at the other workplaces. But if that is not, if that is not possible, then I would advise mothers to kindly express breast milk because it's still, it's still the best nutrition for your baby. Mm -hmm. Express the breast milk, leave it at home with a child caretaker. Yes, thank you. <laughs> 
Thank you, thank you, thank you. So uh, I believe people have any questions. I'm going to request our, our producers to put the number that you can use to call. Just tap that number and then call us in the studio. But there are people that are still asking questions, and uh, someone is asking what causes cracked nipples in breastfeeding mothers. This is Simon and. Um, uh, Nicola says thanks for the show. I'm watching from Boucher. Wow, this is amazing. Thank you so much. Then Kito, see how okay, let's start with the cracked nipples. The cracked nipples can be caused by maybe a baby biting your breast okay. or when the mother has dermatitis. A condition of flaky skin can also result into cracked nipples. Oh yeah. I think who was asking the question that was Simon. Uh, I'd want to go to um, Barnabas. How do I preserve the breast milk locally without a refrigerator? Eddie. Yeah, so locally without a refrigerator, it's quite uh, hard because once the milk is out of the breast, um, the only way you can preserve it is to make sure that it's at a temperature where germs are not going to multiply in there. So ideally, if, if, if they can't refrigerate it, the best way is to make sure that the child consumes the milk as soon as it's uh, expressed. Even the one that is expressed, um, mm. if, if, if you've warmed it for the baby to take and anything happens and the baby doesn't take it, you should either discard it away because after you've rewarmed again, you're not going to refrigerate another time. Yeah. Okay, and then, um, wow. Uh, Roy says that can that uh, expressed milk be boiled in a pan? He said, wow. <laughs> <laughs> they shouldn't, they, you shouldn't boil that milk. Reason being, um, that breast milk, its composition <laughs> has antibodies and so many like other this. natural substances. <laughs> if you apply that heat, they are going to get really spoiled. You'll be destroying all the composition. Yeah. Banag. <laughs> <laughs> Tokahana. <laughs> anyway, thank you for your question. But <laughs> the questions are just amazing. The number is over your screen. That is 0786-050762. Uh, um, my name is Gifty Nakainga, and I'm so much honored to have our nutritionist. That is Regina Anzua. We're going to have a variety of uh, questions answered. But before we go into the so, the so many other questions that you have, we would want to tackle the do's and don'ts of... Um, when you are breastfeeding what are you supposed to eat and what are you not supposed to breastfeed let me first have this caller hello 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 can you hear me you are watching bethan tv and it's the nutrition spot your names and where you're calling us from my name is sharon and I'm calling from Bukere in Mukono District. Your names? My name is Sharon. Yes, Sharon. Thank you for watching Betha and TV. We're looking at uh, the importance of uh, breastfeeding. So what do you have to say about that? Most welcome. And I'm very happy. This is a very interesting talk. Mm. I don't particularly have a question. Okay. But I'd just like to complement what uh, the nutritionist the have said. Uh, I'm a mother of one. Yes, sir. A big boy. Wow. I, I breastfed my child and I don't. I, I, for, for three, three, three and a half years. Three and a half years? Wow. <laughs> yes. Wow. Okay. But I did not do it you know, by coincidence. I knew exactly what I was doing. Exactly what the nutritionist was saying. So, uh, because of that, I have, uh, you know, I did that because I wanted an intelligent child. I wanted to boost the immunity, etc., etc. But then also as a working father, okay, and uh, the breadwinner, and you know the bread earner in the home at the time. Yeah. Sometimes you know you have to you go through those issues of uh, how do you manage the breastfeeding and all, and then you also have to work. True. Sure. Practically speaking, you cannot 
save your work because you need the, you need you need the income. So for me, what I do, I breastfeed in the morning before leaving for work. You breastfeed in the morning. I don't want to know whether they get important, uh, uh, you know, the importance of uh, breast expressing. So I breastfeed in the morning. I uh, leave whatever food was required for the baby during the day. But then in the evening, again, I breastfeed and grow the life. Thank you so much, Sharon. I think oh. that that has been a query or a question that people are having that uh, how best can mothers that are <coughs> working class be able to really breastfeed their children? Thank you so much for that testimony. She was able to breastfeed up to three and a half years. Ah, that's nice. shocking and it's amazing. Yeah. But um, our time is running so fast and uh, I believe there are mothers or there are women that keep on complaining that uh, I don't have enough breast milk. Okay, that they do not have enough. So, what are some of the foods they are supposed to eat while breastfeeding? And what are some of those that they are not supposed to eat? Yeah, so first of all, uh, in most cases when women complain about not having enough, sometimes it's psychological. Uh, because... Uh, <coughs> oh, okay, we've lost that call. Yeah. You can that try is, to call her. Uh, okay, hello? Hello? Okay, if you uh, try to call again, if you're calling, tell us where you are watching the program from and your names. Hello? You are watching Beta and TV and it's the nutrition spot. Where are you watching us from? <coughs> okay. Yes. Yeah, so um, these mothers, uh, most of the times, even when they think the milk is not enough, it's, it's, it's enough because uh, the little you produce, sometimes it's about the frequency of how, of how you're breastfeeding. You could be producing little, but you're, you're breastfeeding maybe every after an hour or every after two hours. And in the end, that's enough for your body, for your baby at the end of the day. Uh, but in cases where indeed the mother is unable to produce enough, um, they can uh, try to take in uh, more fluids and also you have certain plants like fenugreek, fennel seeds uh, that they can incorporate into their diet that will help them to have more milk at the end of the day. Thank you so much, um, Regina. Um, the, the practices that are, uh, okay, I would call them the practices, but what are they supposed to avoid? while breastfeeding um, mothers should avoid taking alcohol okay. smoking because this alcohol and these cigarettes contain those dangerous substances once a breastfeeding mother takes them in they will be they will be taken in into the milk and then the baby will take this milk and also take in these dangerous substances like nicotine yeah, I also so think, it affects uh, the baby in the yeah, long it affects run. the baby because it's a dangerous substance. Yeah, it's also crucial that during the breastfeeding period, the mothers watch out for which drugs they buy. They should avoid just getting drugs over the counter, hmm. and they should also avoid birth control pills because the, these drugs usually have substances that are not good for the baby. And whatever the mother takes in, it's it's uh, it will be reflected in the in the breast milk. So they should be quite curious about what they, they should be really, uh, they should pay attention to what they eat during the breastfeeding period. Thank you so much, Eddie. I would want to read one more question from Nicholas. Okay, two. Um, <clears throat> one of the question is, um, uh, I think this is Simon. Simon says that uh, what brings about crampy sensations in breastfeeding mothers? Um, I should have Regina answer that. The, the uterine contractions that occur after, after the postpartum bleeding cause these on and off cramping sessions. Yeah. yeah, also during that time when they are breastfeeding, uh, you know there are hormones that are being released, there is oxytocin that is responsible for the release of the milk from the breast and those hormones also affect the, 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 the uterus. So if they get those cramps when they are breastfeeding, it's quite mm -hmm. normal. It's not something to worry about. 
Thank you so much. I think this goes to Zua. Nicholas is asking that uh, what are some of uh, the effective strategies that should be ad uh, that should address common breastfeeding challenges and such as uh, low milk supply or difficulties with lactating and how can mothers best prepare themselves to overcome all this? Yeah, so currently when you move to some hospitals you'll find that they have in, in the maternity ward before even these mothers give, give birth you'll find there is a lactation consultant, there is a pediatric doctor, there is a lactation consultant that is going to get them through. So these people are usually counseling them and even the counseling helps them psychologically because mm. some mothers just don't have the confidence that they can produce that milk. So when they go through these sessions, even before giving birth, by the time they give birth, they are more assured of themselves and they know that they will produce enough milk. And um, yeah, so, these, these systems, I, I, I believe, if they're also extended to the private hospitals and to the hospitals back in our, in our rural areas where maybe they don't have these better health services, it will be really a good thing. Thank you so much, Zua. We cannot uh, exhaust or um, talk about breastfeeding and we finish it just in like one hour. The WHO is organizing to have the whole week just talking about breastfeeding. And for us, we're having only one hour. But health um health is so much broad and as Beth and tv we have so many programs that talk about health so if you are a mother out there and you're so much interested in uh, learning how to breastfeed what it does and all that just tune in we have the pediatric voice that happens every single thursday from 8 to 9 p.m so make it a point every wednesday uh, not thursday every wednesday 8 to 9 p.m to tune in and watch the pediatric voice it tackles everything that concerns children and trust me it will in detail Bring for you breastfeeding as the nutrition spot we're going to stop here but allow me appreciate the different viewers that have been online that is on um, <clears throat> youtube i want to appreciate uh Yebale, uh then uh, blessing simon eric um katsi marich uh chirunji tarajen uh agnes nantongo second jacrenma eric nabasta esther nakato lutama guzi javida Mweba Zehana Roy, Banabas Kuto, Kutosi from Abududa. Thank you so much, Banabas. <laughs> then uh, Nicholas, Nicholas Nabukosi. Thank you so much, Nicholas. I think um, those are the people that we've had watching online and those that have been diligent and watching us from uh, their screens in their sitting rooms or wherever you've been watching us from. Those that are on Facebook, we've not been able to go into checking messages on Facebook, but thank you so much for loving the nutrition spot and loving Bethan TV. Just in a less than a minute, Regina, greetings to the people in Hoima and... <laughs> Thank you to all our viewers of Bethany TV and all my people in Hoima. I send you greetings. Thank you for watching. And to all mothers, we are, as we head to, into the breastfeeding week, I advise you to kindly breastfeed our babies, especially for the first six months exclusively and up to two years with complementary feeding. Thank, thank you. you. Eddie. Yes, thank you very much, our viewers, all those that, I, that have kept through the show. Uh, yeah, we really... Thank you, and we believe that you'll make breastfeeding the gold standard way of, of nourishing the baby. Yeah, it's hard, but very possible. Yeah. And yeah, I think we shall embrace it. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. We believe that we can, uh, one of the ways that we can transform our lives is through nutrition. So as the nutrition spot, we usually bring you a series of topics on how you're supposed to eat, how you are supposed to, to, to behave <laughs> in the sense of what to eat and what not to eat. So every Thursday from 8 to 9 p.m., we usually talk about anything that uh, in, is in line with nutrition, anything that is um, beyond nutrition the other shows so keep locked on to becca and tv because we have amazing programs that are here to teach you to transform you and make sure that uh, you live your life at its best so my name is gifty nakaying i want to appreciate the viewer that just called in sharon thank you so much for your wonderful testimony so to those that um want to be a part of this program every thursday 8 p.m good night